Okay, y'all, so it's Neva from Manic Mama Musings, and it is Mental Health Monday. And I am so glad I did not sleep last night. I was awake when the sun came up, and I just kept laying there thinking, okay, I need to sleep. So um, I finally did fall asleep, but then I had my alarm set. I got up so that I could be awake for counseling because I haven't. He was sick. He had a real bad sinus infection that turned into bronchitis, come to find out. I, I didn't know what was going on, but he was out of the office for like a week, and he's a workaholic, so my counselor is. And then, um, and then I missed, I, had, I, was, I was in that flare, and I missed a few. So we finally got to, we do video, and so we finally got, because every time he's ready to go back into the office, somebody, the office workers that are there that are still making the phone calls and doing the insurance, somebody ends up coming positive for COVID and then they can't be open. So we've been doing video. So I got to have my counseling today and it felt good because, and I think I'm going to need it because I don't know if I told y'all, like my dad had 14 brothers and sisters and I can't even name them all. And I didn't even meet half of them. Like that's including my dad. Like I knew my dad, my uncle George, my aunt Nancy, my aunt Donna, my uncle Vic and my uncle Rex. I think I'd met like six of the 15. Okay. So my niece did this DNA thing and um, she found my aunt Charlotte um, who was the baby. Like my dad was still in the house when she was a kid, but not for very long. She was quite a bit younger than my dad. My dad was the third youngest then my aunt Nancy came after him and then Charlotte came after her and she's, I don't know how much younger than my aunt Nancy, but quite a bit, I mean, you know, a few years, four or five years, I think. So, um, my aunt Nancy and my dad, my aunt Nancy was the one my dad was closest to as far as growing up. And then he got to know my uncle George and my uncle Rex and stuff, but, um, because they, most of them were out of the house. My uncle Rex took off with the circus when he was a teenager. So anyway, um, I got to, I emailed my aunt Charlotte and the first email I got back, I was very emotionally, I cried real hard because I've missed my dad. It's been 23 years, but, and I hadn't really, lately I've been wanting to find his family, but, um, I don't know what it was, but I was overcome with emotion when I received the email. So, um, I didn't hear from her for a while and then I got the email and that's when I went into the whole emotion thing. I'm just going to cruise for a minute. I just dropped the girls off. I'm headed home to take a nap because I haven't slept much, but so, um, I, uh, um, I, I got overcome with emotion when I got the email. And so I didn't email her back. Well, then I received a second email telling me if I wanted a list of her brothers and sisters, she would try to remember them all. So I don't feel bad for not knowing all their names because she's not even sure. Um, she lives with her and my aunt Nancy live together. They are their only two out of the 15 still alive, which are the youngest, but my dad died at an early age, 58. So, um, I know my uncle Rex who worked at the, in the circus, I know that he lived to be 80 something. I believe he can be found on, um, on Google Rex Williams. He was kind of a famous, um, elephant trainer. So if you Google Rex Williams, that's my uncle, y'all. Anyway, so, and she said that she, that she tried to find, you know, find out, help me build a little bit of a family tree, which would be nice. I plan on doing the DNA, the ancestry DNA that my niece did. I plan, I'm planning on doing it because I would like to find family. Um, my mom's family, it's kind of easy to find quite a few of them because um, my mom was like through Facebook, my mom, I, because of my mom and Facebook, I found ones that some of them, my mom didn't even know, you know, that kind of thing. So 
I'm just kind of worried that when that starts happening, because, you know, when my dad died, it, it was real hard on me. Um, I had helped take care of him and it was just a, so I, I'm happy to say I had my counseling today. I think I needed it because of that. But he said if his cough is better because he's still coughing from his, his sinus infection and bronchitis, which is understandable. Um, so he says that when, um, that gets better. If it's better by Friday, I can go in and do my EMDR, which I'm happy for because I do EMDR for my PS PTSD. I'm going to put a video down below, link below that explains EMDR. Because I don't really know how to explain it, but there's a video I found that explains it. And so I will put it down below so that you, if you're curious, but it has helped my PTSD. Um, I grew up, I wasn't physically abused as a child. But I went through a lot of emotional stuff with my dad. And I witnessed my dad being physically abusive to my mom. And then I had some very bad traumas as an adult. And so that's why I do the EMDR uh, is for the PTSD from all of that. And it has helped. Um, I probably would not be with LJ and have a good a decent relationship and not because he's not a good person and not because i'm not a good person but i would have too many fears and trust issues i was working on that when he and i got together and so therefore i feel like i was in a better place to have a decent relationship with somebody so i'm excited for the emdr because i've really just I've kind of needed that and it's been over a year since I've done EMDR and I, I feel like some things are coming up because I want to be prepared if she asks about my dad because she didn't really know my dad. Um, I want to be prepared to answer the questions in the best way without, without I want to do justice to my dad. I want to be truthful without being disrespectful, if that makes any sense. I don't want to lie about him. I don't sugarcoat stuff. I also understand he came from a very bad place, like a very traumatic childhood. And so I do know that that's why he was the way he was most of the time. But that being said, it still is what it is. And, you know, so I, I feel like if I start my EMDR and stuff, then maybe I'll be prepared for if questions come up or if there are things I find out about his family. And I just need to get back in there because I still have things I deal with from past relationships that pop up with me and LJ sometimes. So I'm excited about that. But today, what I want to talk about besides EMDR is self-medicating because we just talked about suicide last last week i talked about suicide and what it does to the people that are left behind well i also want to talk about self-medicating drugs alcohol i do believe that marijuana can be helpful but you also can misuse it because you can misuse lots of prescription drugs lots of people are addicted to painkillers because when they started taking them, they helped with the pain. They became chemically dependent, but they also realized if they took enough, they kind of felt numb emotionally, okay? Drinking. I used to drink to be able to be sociable, to get over social anxiety. And that's part of the reason I got high too. I mean, why I smoked weed. Now, I'm not against medicinal marijuana and I do use it to sleep. I will be honest with you, but I know the difference in that and using it to overcome a mental illness, like to cover up the symptoms of a mental illness. That's why they don't prescribe Xanax and stuff so much because it really didn't cure you. It just covered up the, the symptoms. I self-medicated. My dad self-medicated with alcohol. I self-medicated with, I won't talk. Okay. 
I will. I'll be honest because I'm open and honest with y'all. I tried huffing paint when I got out of high school. First drug I used, you know, they tell you marijuana is a gateway drug. That's a lie. Because I didn't, I would not smoke marijuana, but I sure did have paint with friends that I met when I, after I graduated and I drank a lot. And when I was high and drunk, I could be sociable and I, it would get rid of, even for just a little moment, it kind of all that stuff in my brain between the bipolar and the PTSD from growing up in a, a, a volatile household was gone. You know what I mean? And so I, that's what I used it for. And I almost died one night from huffing paint. Then I went on to popping uppers because I was drinking all night because, oh, I could party and be sociable when I was drunk. Then I'd have to go to work. So I'd have to pop something to wake up until I almost overdosed on those one night. My heart started racing. I started throwing up. I was shaking all over and my friend took them and flushed them. And she was my roommate. And she said, if I catch you with it again, you need to get out. And she goes, not because I'm against, you know, I'm not one to tell anyone, but you almost died and I love you. Best thing she could have ever done for me. That's my friend Lisa. Still a great friend like that today. Okay. Um, and then, oh, a couple years out of high school is when I first smoked weed. And at first it was just because, oh, I could laugh. I'm not a real laughy person, y'all. My sense of humor is broken. I think we've discussed this. I got kind of a twisted, weird sense of humor. So, um, and then I realized that, man, I could just be chill. Because I was so anxious all the time. I could just be chill. And I wasn't depressed when I was high. I didn't get manic when I was high. I was just, and I liked that. Now that's before I knew I was bipolar. I knew something wasn't the same with me as other people. Let me turn this off so I'm not running the. I knew something was different about me, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't really even know there was a name for it. I mean, I'd heard of bipolar, but oh, heaven forbid I be bipolar. So, and then I was, when I got pregnant with my daughter, I was leading up to that, getting pregnant. I was stoned and drunk all the time. It's the way I, I dealt with life. I, if I wasn't drunk, I was high. If I wasn't high, I was drunk. Or I was both. So then I got, found out I was pregnant and I stopped everything cold turkey. Best thing I ever did. Because a lot of friends I used to party with, and I'm not saying it was the marijuana. It was the way the world transitioned into people were smoking crack and stuff. But all, most, a lot of the friends I used to party with ended up on meth. Some of them never even smoked weed. They just drank. But they ended up on meth. So I'm afraid that if I'd have kept partying and hadn't stopped what I was doing, I would have ended up with them. Because I'm no better than them. I was doing exactly what they are probably doing, which is self-medicating. So there's my philosophy on that. So um, I, I want you to understand that you need to try hard not to judge someone for self-medicating. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to tell them that they're effing up. Okay. I'll put it as nicely as I can. I was told by my mom more than once, even, even though I am bipolar and stuff, when I was messing up, my friend Lisa was really good at putting her foot down when I was really wrong and telling me I needed to get my stuff together, okay? But you need to understand that not always, but sometimes somebody is actually dealing with things in the only way that for whatever reason they know how. And maybe it's that's how they grew up. They grew up in a home where they're, that's what their parents did. You need to love them. And you need to show them some tough love and try to help them. But uh, try not to be judgy about it. Just be straightforward. Not judgmental. Um, 
you know, I'm not, don't get me wrong. When I see people walking around the neighborhood that I know are a shady character, I don't, they, I don't know them. And so I don't trust them. It's not like I'm going to walk up to them and tell them, listen, because I need to think of my safety, but I also try not to look at them too and say that worthless piece of crap out getting high and, um, and if you're one that self-medicates, I want you to understand that you, whether you believe it or not, because my philosophy always was I'm only hurting myself because I didn't have any kids. No. I, now that I'm a mom, I know what I put my, I know what I put my mom through. And okay, I put her through fear that I wasn't, that she was going to get a call that I was dead. My dad too, I'm sure. He just didn't have a way of showing that he was scared. It was just came out in anger. I embarrassed my sisters and I'm sure I embarrassed my mom. I wasn't one that got like drunk and high in public places and made a spectacle of myself, but we came from a very small town and everybody knew everybody's business. So you imagine what I was doing our town magnified it times a hundred. So say, okay, you smoke a little weed. It gets back to your mom that you're dealing meth out of your house. That's how it progresses in small towns. Okay. And so embarrassment, um, and hurt because you know that the per the person you love is hurting themselves. The worry that they're not going to live and the fact that they could end up di dying or being very sick from the drugs or bad things happening to them while they're high or drunk. So there are other ways other than suicide of destroying yourself and hurting others while you're trying to cope with what's wrong with you. I'm not judging you and I'm not, I, I, I don't want you to self-medicate if you are. My request, my, my hope for you is that you will get therapy and you will see a psychiatrist if you need medication. That's my hope for you. Um, my email I think is working again. I don't know, but I'm going to put another one of my emails in the description box. If you need me to help you find a place to see a counselor or even rehab, I don't know what I can do for you, but I do have, um, I have people that I can reach out to that, well, my therapist would be more than help, happy to help me find, I don't have to give nobody's names, just your area, and he would be more than happy to help me find somewhere to help you. So that being said... I'm just telling you that even though you think you're only hurting yourself, for one, I don't want you to hurt yourself. And for two, someone, just like suicide, someone somewhere loves you so much that every time you go on a bender, whether it be drinking or drugs or whatever, they hurt too. And they are up all night worrying about you and wondering if you're okay. So those are my words for today. Um, a lot of people deal with PTSD with drugs. Um, and bipolar even, their mood swings. It kind of, we kind of even me out. So um, I will put the link to about EMDR so that if you do have a counselor or you're looking for one, you can ask them about EMDR. And if they don't do it, maybe they can help you find someone who does if you believe that you might need it. It has helped me immensely. When you watch it, you're going to be like, I'm not so sure because I told my therapist, I was like, that sounds ridiculous, but it's not. Now I can't do the eye movement one because I get migraines, but I hold these buzzers and the vibration switch between hands. I start out talking about one thing and end up talking about something way different sometimes. And it's something that my subconscious is dealing with at the time, most of the time. So, um, that's all I have for you for mental health Monday. I hope I've helped somebody.
just know that I, I wish that we all could find a, a good mental place. I wish we all had access to mental health services. I wish that we all mentally could realize that we need because some people, their brain won't let them understand that they need that. They think that there's nothing wrong with the way they are. Even when they're self-medicating, they don't realize that they're doing that because their body can't deal with what's going on. So, I love y'all. I hope this has helped someone or helped you to deal with someone that you love. And um, I will be talking to you either later on tonight because I've already started as speaking my truth, but I don't know if... I don't know if um, that part I'll post today or tomorrow, but for sure there'll be this Mental Health Monday, and then I'd like to talk about some things I'm working on crochet-wise, so I may have a crochet. I don't have any FOs. Well, I do, but the the girl hasn't sent me a picture. Um, but I have some whips, so I might show you some of my whips and do a crochet video today. I love y'all, and there'll be another announcement for my 80s in a few days. Um, there's a few other people joining in or at least one more person. So love y'all and have a wonderful day.